Now it's not exactly common knowledge that the fairies are absolute bastards when it comes to enforcing copyright law. In fact, I'm fairly certain that several of them work for YouTube. But it is true. This was discovered by a young man named Paddy Hussey. Now, he was a native of Ballymo and he worked as a piper. One evening, he had been hired to ply his trade at a local fair, and on his way home, he passed by a fairy hill. And from this hill, he could hear the strains of a music so sweet, it nearly brought him to tears. He paused for a moment, listening to it. And he could tell that this was a reel. Now, reels are very, very popular. There's a lot of money in playing a good reel. So he decided to wait there a little bit longer, listening to the music, listening to this fairy reel, until he was fairly certain he had it memorised and knew how to play it himself. So when he was satisfied that he had memorised the fairy reel, he headed back home. He filled up his pipes and he began to play the fairy reel for his mother. And he was only a few bars in when his mother stood bolt upright and said, Don't you ever play that music again. Do you hear me? Never, ever again. Why not? says Paddy, it's a lovely reel. I just listened to it a few minutes ago. It's wonderful. Why shouldn't I play it? You know how you don't have a father, said Paddy's mother. It's because he used to play that reel you were just playing and he, he heard it coming out of the fairy hill the same way you did. And he played it all the time, and sure didn't the fairies come along and take him away, shove him in a sack, and drag him down under the hill. And that's where he is now, and that's where you're going to end up if you play that music again. Now promise me, you will never play that fairy reel ever again. And Paddy, feeling suitably horrified, he agreed, he promised he would never ever play the fairy reel ever again. Two weeks later, Paddy was hired to play at a wedding. Now, unfortunately for Paddy, a great number of pipers were hired to play at this wedding, and most of them were of a somewhat higher calibre than Paddy. And every time he played a note, one of them would play it better. Every time he played a tune, one of them would be able to play it sweeter. And as the night wore on, he got more and more frustrated, more and more jealous. Before eventually he just bursted out. Well, listen, I know a song that none of you know how to play. And it's the best song anyone has ever heard. And it's better than anything any of you can play. The other pipers turned and he said, well, play it for us then, Paddy. I will so. So he filled up his pipes and he began to play the fairy reel. And at first it was going very well. People stood enraptured, entranced, their jaws hanging open. Everyone turned to look at him. And as the power of the reel really began to take hold, everyone got up on their feet and began dancing, swirling and twirling everywhere, all over the place. Until the lights went out. And all of the crockery and all of the cutlery on the tables and the sideboards began rattling and shaking and clinking, and everyone began to scream. And the door burst open. And in stormed a troop of fairies, elbowing people aside, making a beeline for Paddy. They shoved his head in a sack, forced him up the chimney. And that was the last anyone saw of Paddy that night. A weeks later, Paddy still hadn't been seen since the wedding. No one told his mother what had happened to him. But she knew exactly what had happened to him. She thought to herself, here I am. 
all alone. No husband, no son. All because those gobshite men won't listen to me. What'll I do? What'll I do? Now just at that moment, a knock came at the door. And it was a mink care woman. A Paddy's mother, being a very good, well brought up person, invited this woman in. They got to talking and chatting. And Paddy's mother brought up what had happened to Paddy. How he was lost under the fairy hill. How he had played the fairy real and the fairies had taken him for that. And how she was now stuck here all alone. And the Ming Kara woman said, hold on. We might be able to do something about that. But my mother, she died not too long ago. And she left me this box. And in the box, among lots of other things, is the relic of a saint. And my mother said, this relic, it has power over demons, spirits, and fairies. So I think if we put our two heads together, we can come up with some way to get your son back. And so the two women, they would camp out all through the night, hiding themselves among the trees and the bushes, near the fairy hill, watching the comings and goings of the fairies, getting used to their patterns. And one night, when the two women knew that the fairies were going to be trooping from their hill, to another fairy hill about a half mile away. They knew that was the night to make their move. Oh, so they waited in concealment, watching for the fairies to emerge. And when they had all left the hill and the hit door of the hill closed behind them, the two women stood up and they ran straight into the crowd looking for Paddy. They found him sitting upon a coal black horse. And the mink hair woman, she opened up the box in front of him. And when the fairy horse saw the relic of the saint inside, it reared up, shrieking in fright and accidentally throwing Paddy from its back. When Paddy had collected himself after the fall, he ran straight to his mother. She put her arms around him and started hurrying him back home. But the fairies weren't happy with this. They spurred their horses and gave chase. So the mink hair woman, she pulled the relic out of the box. And she brandished it at the fairies. And just like the fairy horse, the fairies were terrified at this. Absolutely horrified. So they turned around and rode back to the hill. Now Paddy and the two women, they went back home. Paddy's mother thanked the mink hair woman and she told her that if she was ever in trouble, if she ever needed anything, she was to knock on that door. And then she sat Paddy down in a chair. She gave him the bollocking of a lifetime. And you can be sure that Paddy never played the fairy reel ever again after that night. <laughs>